Okay, so tonight we're going to uh, next size some 223 Remington cases. And what I'm using is a Lee uh, collet sizing net guide. And this thing is absolutely simplicity in itself. I don't know why anybody else hasn't thought of this. It's a, pa it's a patent product. Um, Lee comes out with some cool products every once in a while. Um, I really like the design of a lot of their products. Um, another one that I use is their factory crimp die. It just works. I have it for several different calibers and I use it quite often for various different reasons. Um, so tonight we're going to neck size these cases. Basically what's going on here is there's a mandrel inside there, inside that die. And there's four fingered collet. So when the case goes up inside the die, the mandrel goes inside and it's sized a couple thousand shy of bullet diameter. And these fingers crimp over top of the neck and squeeze it onto the mandrel, the steel mandrel. And it's designed that when you bring your case back out of the die, that the elasticity of the brass is such that it comes back to the right ID so that your bullet is gripped properly. There's a couple thousand that grips it. And it really, I didn't believe at first when I started using these dies that it was enough crimp, but believe me it is. You cannot pull that bullet back out of that case. So trust me, it works. So we're going to do this. It is absolutely simplicity in itself. I've got this set in my uh, seven position uh, Reading turret press. I love this press. It's just a great press. If you can afford to buy one, buy one. It's the last one you're ever going to buy. It's way overbuilt. Everything on it is bigger than it has to be. Good. Every station index is perfect. Good. Um, it does cam over like a lot of the single stage presses. Lee presses don't cam over. So why am I mentioning that? If you read the instructions, it tells you that if you've got a cam over press like this, to screw the die in two full turns, I think it is. It's, it's enough to take the cam out of it, right? So when it comes up here, the cam, see where it's pressing against the bottom of the die, you don't get an opportunity to cam over, because that cam over really creates a lot of pressure, and you're just going to bugger up your die. So, simply put a case in there, it's got a decapping pin in it, right? So you're doing everything all at once. You press down, and what I do is, I one eight turn it like that. There you go. You can't feel it. Perfect ID. It's nice and smooth on the outside. I hope we get an opportunity to see. I've ordered in a whole bunch of 40 green VMAX bullets. Um, this gun's got a 1 in 12 twist and it really likes the 40 grain bullets compared to the 50s. Don't get me wrong, the 50 grain bullets that I've shot, and I've shot lots of different brands of them already. I've had this gun a year now. Um, you, know, you, can, you can shoot a 3 8 inch group at 100 yards pretty much all day long, you know. The uh, 40 grain with a 50 grain bullet, the 40 grain VMAX, really you could shoot a group inside that group, so. I'm really happy with them. I can't wait for them to show up. So that's the first step. Now what happens is, of course, the, uh, the next step is to make sure these are the right length. So we will trim them to 1.750 inches. And then from, from then we're going to make sure that case neck is the right thickness. And we'll show you how to do that. And we're going to show you how we clean up the whole case and make it as uh, uniform as possible to the next one. That's how we make those uh, dinky little groups and hopefully that five shot one whole group. Okay, so we've got that same batch of uh, 223 cases and uh, now the trimming part comes in. I use a uh, Horny Pacific uh, lathe style set of calipers here. Trimming. I measure them in and out. It's a little anal but I'm not an AR shooter, so I don't shoot a ton of cases. So we're trimming these to 1.750. That one's like literally bang on. Um, same here. And I gotta tell you, these are full length resized, shot out of my uh, 700. 
and you can see right now, like, there is not, and these were all sized at 1.75. I have my uh, full length resizing dies set pretty close as far as head spacing goes. These things are not stretching. Okay, so this one's out a couple thou. It doesn't make me nervous, but we're, we're still going to just spin it quick. So there we are, 1.750. Okay, so those are all done. So it didn't take much trimming. I trimmed a couple before I turned the camera on. Um, they're literally all 1.750 inches. So trim length is good. So the next obvious thing to do is to uh, turn these. These necks haven't been turned. You only have to do that once, right? So I haven't turned these necks yet. So we will turn the necks and uh, clean up the cartridge or it'll deburr the inside of the flash hole and I'll show you how to do all that or how I do it anyways and we'll just keep progressing and sooner or later we're going to shoot one of these things. Okay so we've got the same batch of cases here and uh, we're going to case prep them now. Um, the first step is to uh, deburr and chamfer the uh, case neck and that's important. We're going to have to do it sooner or later because remember we've trimmed them so there's a bit of an edge there. <coughs> It also makes it easier to put the case in the uh, case turning tool. So we'll just quickly do this. You don't want to uh, remove too much material um, because you don't really want a knife edge on your case mouth. That's all you need is a little sliver of brass there that uh, Upon, <clears throat> upon firing ends up in your barrel. So it's just nothing more than um, <clears throat> a light twist. You can feel it. Okay, so those have all been uh, deburred and chamfered. The next thing to do is to turn the cases. and <sighs> We're trying to get the high side off. And um, I think if you were to buy really good uh, brass like Lapua, from what I understand, there is, they're literally perfect. These aren't, but we can make them really close. Um, I enjoy doing this. So all we're doing is just taking a, the high side off. I've already had the opportunity to set up this turning tool. This one's made by RCBS, and um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's shiny in spots, and that's where it's hit a little bit of a high side. So anyways, like I was saying, I've already had an opportunity to measure uh, with my calipers what a case measures coming out of the chamber. Um, I've used that uh, little miking tool downstairs to have a real look at where I want to be for um, neck thickness and how much material I'm willing to uh, remove. If you try to remove too much material and make them absolutely perfect, you end up with fairly thin neck walls. So we're leaving these at 2.44 inches OD. And we're going to look sometime in the future when we mic these on that uh, neck thickness gauge what the variations are. So the next thing we're going to do, this is all nice and smooth, is we're going to um, remote the flash holes. So this is a special tool. This one happens to be made by Sinclair and uh, works really really well. So you just simply insert the uh, tool and there you go. There are some cases that you're going to do that um, it just it gets, it's tough to uh, turn that little piece of uh, 
brass out. These holes are just punched. Eh? There's quite often a little piece of brass stuck in there. These are pretty good cases, but some of them aren't. And uh, you might have to use that shell holder there because you just you can't hold on to it with your hand, right? So this index is it just goes right through the uh, flash hole. This is, there's a cone shaped stop here that um, you know for other than these small cartridges, you would index it on the mouth of your uh, case just to keep it from. It's not a stop; it just keeps it from wiggling. Now what we're going to do is. Um, this tool is kind of cool. It does two things, really. It cleans the bottom of your primer pocket. And I just alluded to that, that I clean the bottom of every primer pocket. I don't care if it's 223 or my 350. I, it just gets done. It doesn't take much time, and I don't want Murphy's Law getting involved. And secondly, what this does is it squares the bottom of the uh, primer pocket. So it this depth here is the correct depth for any uh, primer pocket of this size. These are small rifle primers, right? C23. <clears throat> it's pretty simple. This doesn't take any longer than uh, if you were to use an ordinary primer pocket cleaner. Um, we're not pushing too hard. We don't. You know, you really can't take any extra material out of the hole anyways because it, it uh, deadheads on that shaft there. Okay, so there you go. So we've uniformed the primer pockets. So the last step now is all we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that um, our necks are nice and clean. I actually do this a lot now. I used to stand up every all the time. You know, you make a reloading bench, and that's what it is. It looks like a. And then the older you get, and I've made four of them now. The older you get, the more you got to ask yourself, why am I standing up to do all this? Like it just doesn't even make sense. Like, you know, the word workbench. So you, oops. So you got to stand. You got to stand at the workbench. It's like why? So, really what I'll do is I'll take this sometime and I'll sit in, sit in front of the TV and watch a hockey game or a baseball game or whatever and just slowly pick away at it. I, I think the worst thing you could do is turn it into something that actually resembles work. Like, this isn't work. This is fun. I really, really enjoy doing this. I enjoy the day, the moment, the second that I touch that trigger and uh, my crosshair is on a bull elk or a bull moose, or white tail buck, whatever. I just, it's, I would never ever buy another box of factory shells. I haven't bought a box of factory shells in 25 years, I guess. I used to reload for a buddy of mine I used to hunt with a lot. I remember we were getting ready to go push a big bush. And he had a 270. And there was a brand new box of Federal Premiums. I don't think they still make those anymore. They were in a gold box. And then I had a box. It was, in, I think, in an old Winchester box. But I had some uh, partitions loaded up for him. We were all getting ready to go. Made these big plans. And so the way we go, he reaches over top of that box of uh, federal premium ammunition and grabs mine. That's like, man, that's a good feeling. Okay, so there you go. These are ready to go. So what we're going to do the next time you see me is we're going to prime them. And then we're ready to drop some powder and put some bullets in. So until we do that. Okay, so we've got our 223 cases here, and tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the thickness of the neck walls. I've got a Redding um, a neck uh, thickness gauge here, 
and what we're going to do is segregate them. So I'm going to keep the ones that I, you know, that one to two thousandths variance here, and then we're going to put the rest of them over here. So I hope that goes that smooth. You know, we've tried to do the best we could here. It's not Lapua brass, it's Remington brass. It's still good brass. So, just to let you know, the thickness of this particular neck is just over 11 thousandths of an inch. So, what this first case is showing me, it's just over 11 thousandths, and the high side is just under 12 thousandths. So, it's less than a thousandths of an inch from uh, min to max on the uh, thickness. I'm going to consider this good. So let's say right now we've got a benchmark of um, a thousandth of an inch. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. Well, maybe it ends up more than that. I mean, we've got to shoot some shells, right? Like We, we can't just uh, end up with three cases. Okay, so we know this is a good one. Just right here, we get things set up. Okay, so we'll see what this one is. So 112 on the hot or 12 thou on the high side, and just just under, yeah, and just right around the 11 thou. So we're going to show you what we're looking at here. You can see that gauge. So that's just over the 11 thou, the high side, just. So obviously we're going to keep that, right? We'll do another one here. I'll show you this little gauge and how I do this. Okay, so you see it protrudes through the, uh, the flash hole. And then you spin it. You can see this little mandrel right here, right? So that. Okay, so we're going to watch this one here. Now that one's over our allotted 1,000s. So we're not going to keep that. Well, we'll keep it, but we're not going to use that. Um, for our target shooting. You see, here's another one that doesn't really appeal to me. It's okay. It'd be a really nice uh, kite load someday, eh? <laughs> now we got to keep this, right? That's a half a thou to the high side. Okay, one left to do. Okay, so we got 45 cases that we can prime, and these ones is what, 5, 10, 15, 14 uh, cases there that um, that we're going to use for cutting loads. So there you go. So the next step now, obviously, and I think I said it wrong in the last video, but the next step now is we're going to uh, prime our cases. And I'm still, I'm going to really wrap my head around it. I don't know if I'm going to use all bench rest primers or if I'm going to split that in half. Uh, I don't know yet. So, um, we'll see. Okay, well today we've uh, got our cases here and we're going to put some uh, rifle primers in them. And uh, we're going to be using these Remington 7.5 small rifle bench rest primers. This is a Lee C press, nothing fancy about it, but it works for me. Uh, I've got uh, hand primers, and I've used other primers too. But the feel for this, uh, for me anyways, personally, uh, I can feel the, the primer going in, and uh, seats it very squarely. You can't really over prime it. One of the things I found out years ago was Lee shell holders actually have a little smaller hole through them 
than anybody else's that I'm aware of. So whether it's RCBS or Lyman or Hornady, they all have a little bit bigger hole. And you'll notice that if you try to use a Lee uh, shell holder in something like this uh, Hornady Pacific uh, trimmer. Because the pin that goes through the hole of the shell holder to push against the uh, base of your uh, case won't go through. So why am I telling you all this? Well, the other holds true too. So this little uh, pin here that uh, is a little cavity that holds your primer. goes through the RCBS, da -da -da -da, Hornady, etc. a little easier. and There's a little bit of a wobble to it. And it's not a big deal if you really don't hold the case in there. Just let the primer find its way. But if you use the Lee shell holder with that little bit smaller hole going through it, um, there is no wobble. You know, another thing this does too, you know, it's the bit back to that touchy feely thing I said in one of the first videos. Every time you put that primer in there, you can see what I'm doing, right? So, I mean, really, you could screw that up, I guess, and put it upside down. And then I touch every one of them to make sure it's seated properly. So, I, I can't imagine doing it, but people have. Actually, uh, seated a primer upside down. I don't know why that happens. I've also got into the habit of always looking through my case to make sure I can see light and I don't know why I'm doing that because of everything that we've done to this case there should not be anything in that case or in that flash hole. Every one of them had to index on that uh, neck thickness gauge which means there was a pin through it. Every one of them got the Flash holdy bird in Chamford. But I do the same thing every time, all the time. Okay, two left. This works nice and slick, eh? That's a nice handy little press. The only reason I ever bought it was just for priming. Just sits here waiting to get used again. Okay, there you go. We've got our 45 shells primed. Now we're gonna have to stick. We're gonna charge our cases now, and uh, unfortunately, I can't find any more of the powder that I wanted to use. I was gonna use Accurate Arms 2460. Get uh, really good groups with this. The standard deviation on velocity is really low. It's nice to work with, uh, man, and I can't find any. So I still got maybe, I don't know, 60, 80, 100 shots left in there, so we're not going to use this. What I did do is I picked up some IMR 8208 XBR. So I found uh, three containers of this, so we're going to hope that um, this provides at least similar results. Hornady Manual says that the maximum load for uh, 8208 is 27 grains. So we're going to start at 26, 26 and a half and 27, and I'm going to load 15 shells of each uh, powder weight. And I guess we're still experimenting. It's fun, anyways, right? I wish I could have, I should have bought more of that 2460 when I had a chance, and I don't know, I was sleeping, I guess. So we got our uh, RCBS uh, 505 scale here set for 10, 26. So 26 grains was what we're going to drop. And we're going to do 15 of them, and then I think what we're going to do is we'll just, we'll load them, okay? Uh, some of my videos, I get long-winded. I got some pretty good stories, but you can't watch all of this. So what we'll do is we're going to uh, drop 15 and 26 grains, then we're going to load the bullets, and then I'm going to finish everything off, 
And then the next video, uh, we're going to check the concentricity on the loaded uh, shells. And hopefully they're all nice and straight. And then we're going to go shooting. So. A buddy of mine's got one of those uh, automatic dispensers. You know, it dispenses and weighs. I think it's a horn. He says it works really good. And you never know, maybe I'll pick one up. I'm way more interested in that RCBS uh, case prep station though. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now, we've got uh, 15 cases with powder in it. And if you noticed, I've checked every line to make sure that there's powder in each one of them. Not too cool putting a bullet on top of an empty case. I don't know how many people have ever had anything to do with competition uh, seating dies. But if I knew way back when what I know now, I would own one of these things for every cartridge I load for. Um, there's two really, really good reasons. One is the sliding alignment sleeve inside of it. And Hornady's got this with the new dimension dies, and I have some new dimension dies, and I love that. So basically, when you hover that bullet over top of that case and you raise your ram and everything goes in, there's a little sliding sleeve that aligns everything. It's just so cool, especially with little bullets like this, right? Secondly is, yeah, it's got a micrometer setting. Um, you're not always playing with it, right? But what it does is, if you have to take this off your press, and this is never coming off this press, this particular one, but if you ever do, you know, one of, one of these, this one here, it, if, you're, if you're changing bullet weights, you're changing this thing. And it's, it's a stressful time. because It's just a waste of time is what it is. This, this die actually has hash marks on it, and they are one thousandth of an inch. That's it. You don't have to get two wrenches out. You don't have to get a screwdriver out. You don't have to get anything out. You spin this, one little hash mark, your bullet just got seated one thousandth of an inch further into the case. So between the low stress factor and that sliding alignment sleeve, I, I would have... Anyways, my... we'll start uh, putting these little bullets in these cases. So you've got fifteen cases here with powder in them. And that's how small these little bullets are, so they're hard. But once you get it up in there, the, the die takes over, right? We're seating these today at 2.258 inches, and I just check a couple, and that is bang on, I don't think you can see that, but bang on 2.258 inches. So, and this, this thing just works every time, I'm not going to measure any more. This die will never come out of this press, it's set perfectly. I always measure the last one, you know, just in case something went sideways. There you go. So those are all identical. We're going to check them for run out right away and, uh, and we'll load up the rest and wait for a nice calm day. Okay, so we're going to check bullet run out and uh, I got this horny. Uh, Runout gauge here, concentricity gauge. We're going to set a benchmark of two thousandths. Nothing's perfect, and you mic this just just between the case mouth and uh, the old jive. <clears throat> so we're going to see what we've got going on here. Well, that's close to two thousandths. I think we'll keep that one. So this is our keep over here. Okay, so we'll keep that one.
really simple procedure. Um, as far as hunting shells go, I check them all. You know, if there's something really out of whack, then yeah, okay, it's going to be a fouling shot. But typically, you don't have to get this goofy with um, hunting gloves. Okay, so of the 15, we've got two that I don't feel I want to shoot because again, we're trying to you know, shoot some really dinky tight groups of this. So I'm really, you know, overly impressed with that. Really, um, I'm going to keep loading here. I got a, some powder to drop, some bullets to put in, and then I still got to check concentricity. So. I guess the next time we'll see you, I'll be out at the range.